The Queensland Police Service, like every other government agency and private sector agency uh, known to me, uh, has a performance management system. We are constantly looking at ways of improving that performance management uh, system and uh, the balanced scorecard is a process well known uh, in industries, uh, both in the private and public sectors, uh, that is used in that regard. The idea for us is that we will be looking at divisional performance uh, using this uh, template approach to performance of our people. It is not a quota system uh, and any targets that we put in place are always aspirational. Uh, just as I said that uh, my vision, my target for the coming year is a 10% drop in uh, crime and I'm talking about property crime and personal uh, offences against the person. Um, I think that that's achievable and I want to put that goal out there for our people. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. How does it differ from a quota system? Um, well, quota systems are where, um, you know, a manufacturing firm, for instance, would say they want to have uh, manufacture 5,000 widgets in a year. Um, we, don't, we don't do that in terms of our, our uh, performance assessment. We'll say, uh, for instance, one of the areas is community contact and how the officers are, are engaging with their local community. So how many it will mean that officers engage by going to PCYC meetings, that they'll be going to public meetings, this is officers in charge, uh, will go to public meetings with, in their local area uh, to engage with the, the key stakeholders around their, their area. It's about visiting schools. Um, those sorts of things. But it is also about um, levels of crime in that community. The idea being that the officers know their local community, they know the, imp the, um, the variances that, are, that occur. Um, if they happen to notice a trend in, for, for instance, um, soft target break and enters, uh, then they'll do something about that. They'll put a strategy in place and they'll measure the success of that strategy by determining if the trend has been reversed. They won't be given like a sheet, say, with a number of RBTs they're expected to do. More so, if they finish a shift and they've done so many RBTs, they'll, be, they'll have to log that. Is that how it works? Or? Absolutely. They'll log their performance so that we can, not we personally, but at the divisional level, so that officers in charge can ensure that the officer's time is being productively spent. I mean, the government give us a lot of money and assets to do our job. Our Part of our role strategically is to demonstrate that we've uh, performed in a way which provides value for money for the community of Queensland. Um, every industry that I know, every other public service body that I know has performance management schemes. If, if performance is measured <coughs> against these um, indicators though, won't it lead to police being pressured into trying to do more? Um, I, I expect our people to do their job. Um, their job is to stop crime in the community, uh, make the community safer, um, and build relationships uh, with our community on a constant and continuous basis. There needs to be ways that we can measure how that's occurring. And because uh, Queensland is such a large state and every area of the state has different factors impacting on it, for instance, uh, what happens at Birdsville uh, in a small area like that, a small rural country uh, environment, is not going to be the same as what happens at Kildangatta or, or in the Queen Street Mall. So we need to make sure that our officers are still performing in that strategic way, in that uh, overarching way, to stop crime, make the community safer and, and engage with the community. But they'll do it in different ways and they'll be measured in different ways uh, in those areas. How is that being measured at the moment, officers' performance? Um, we've had a performance regime of individual performance and district monitoring for many years. Uh, this particular scheme is based on, on a work unit. So that work unit in the main will be divisions, uh, police divisions, and we have a very large number of those right throughout the state. For instance, on the north side of Brisbane, you have the Stafford Police Division, for instance, which is part of the North Brisbane District. And uh, it is at that level where officers in charge, uh, and at Stafford, they may have um, tens of officers, so say 50 officers under their control. 
they will manage the performance of those 50 officers. And the, the division, the divisional performance will be the thing that's managed. One of the strengths of this system is that managers are asked to manage their staff so that they have to have an intimate knowledge of the people working for them, um, their capabilities, but certainly they also need to know what the issues are within that particular community where they work and so that they can target those particular issues. Civil libertarians say it's a return to kill sheets. Yeah, that's really interesting um, because that was never part of the discussion that I had when explaining what a balanced scorecard is about. You can actually Google the balanced scorecard. It's a well, well-known performance uh, system that's been used for many years. We've adjusted it and, and uh, to make it more relevant to the needs of our organisation. But certainly uh, the focus is on the team effort rather than the individual. It's up to managers of those teams, so the team leaders, in fact, to manage the performance and ensure that we're getting value for money from all our people. Are you worried that the public perception will be that police are out to get them? No, not at all. No, no, just the opposite. Um, if people are going about their lawful business, um, they have no problem with the police. Uh, I've said that many, many times. Uh, but if I was a criminal in this state, and as you know, we've been focusing very heavily on criminal motorcycle gang members for a number of months now, and we will continue to do that, um, I'd be worried. But this is about ensuring that our people um, perform uh, adequately and do their job and, and earn their pay, just like any other business. It's the same in, in the media, I would imagine, that you have performance uh, agreements or performance measures within your industry. Uh, there's no difference with ours. Is the service increasingly being, being viewed as a business? Is that, has it always been viewed that way? Or? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Sorry, you said before that you know you want to um, demonstrate to Queenslanders that we're getting you know, value oh, for money out of absolutely. our service. Uh, we've done it in a, in a number of ways, but as I said right from the start, we're always looking for better ways to demonstrate that performance to the community. Um, you might remember the, uh, the Paxar report that came out um, earlier this, sorry, in about the middle of last year. Um, the report, the review undertaken by uh, by former Commissioner Keelty, he was very keen on us being able to demonstrate a cost attribution model for performance. So for instance, um, every drug arrest would cost X number of dollars in, in personnel time and then you use that as your performance measure or your benchmark uh, right across the state as to uh, are other people meeting that same benchmark or, or doing it more efficiently. Um, now, uh, whilst the cost attribution model uh, is a very good model and it's one that we're exploring, um, as I said before, a drug arrest that happens at Birdsville is going to take a whole lot of different variables into account than one that, that occurs, say, at, uh, at Cairns. Um, and that's to do with distances, it's to do with uh, the availability of a support police, those sorts of things. Just moving on to Kyle Windows, can you explain the reasoning behind the five centimetre law? Um, obviously, uh, well, sorry, before we do that, are there any other questions about, about performance measures? I just have one quick question. Is, um, how much extra paperwork um, is required to complete these um, school cards? Yeah, thanks, David. Um, the, the system that we're, we're working towards will be a, basically a technology-based system, and a lot of it will be self-populating. So the sorts of issues like, um, you know, the taskings that people get during a shift um, will self-populate into uh, their work with their working logs and ultimately into the figures that are aggregated up so that an officer in charge on a shift-by-shift -shift basis can be checking you know the sorts of levels of performance that are going on uh, by the team in in their area so in fact the uh, what we're attempting to do is to make this less paper based uh, in terms of the work that or the bureaucratic side of it it, the whole idea is, is to make that itself a much more efficient and effective system. So an individual police officer at the end of their shift will have to plug in, type onto this system and jump their figures in, is that what uh, No, no. What I'm saying is the system will automatically do that. It'll, it'll be an automatic uh, population of, of the templates that we need to measure our performance. And that'll be taken from a, a range of resources, for instance our Q prime entries, um, but it might also be taken straight from their patrol log as well. 
But the only other thing was that what to what extent does this replace your OPRs? I think there's no longer OPRs. Uh, we're doing OPRs still at a district level, and that's a, that's um, run by the five regional ACs, so they still do an OPR process. Um, but the main focus of this performance system is at the unit level, so we're talking about the divisional building blocks for the whole organisation. And as you would know, we have divisions, then districts, and then regions. Okay. Can't we know? Why the law? Um, the law says that... Um, if you leave a vehicle unattended, and that means that you're more than uh, three metres away, the vehicle has to be locked uh, and the windows should be no more than uh, five centimetres open. Um, that was determined on, on the ability of someone to get their arm in to unlock that door, and five centimetres isn't all that much. It's probably about that, about that size. I've actually um, had the opportunity to view footage of the actual offence uh, committed in this in this case, or, or the offence that's going to be alleged. Um, I would back the judgment of my officer uh, who uh, undertook this enforcement action because uh, from the footage that I saw uh, and the reasons that I know uh, the officer utilised to undertake this enforcement in that area, um, I think the officer was doing a good job. Now, to explain that, uh, it's going to be alleged, and uh, as you know, this will uh, ultimately, no doubt, be subject to a court matter. Uh, if the person doesn't wish to um, pay the ticket, they have the right to um, question and query the ticket by simply writing to the police department and asking for it to be reviewed. That's one way. Or the other way is that they can go straight to a court hearing. Um, what's interesting about this particular matter is that uh, the officer was acting on uh, an intelligence brief from in that area that there'd been a number of uh, thefts from motor vehicles and um, unlawful uses. Uh, the officer, in fact, had checked five vehicles. Um, two of those vehicles he gave tickets to. Uh, three, he was able to locate the owners. And he, the reason for that were, was that by checking um, the car registrations, he was able to associate those with um, local houses. He went and he spoke to them, um, cautioned them uh, for the offences. Uh, so he used his discretion. Um, this particular vehicle uh, that was uh, one of the two that he actually booked, uh, it's my understanding he was unable to locate any person associated with that. And um, as I said, I've, I've seen the, um, the photographs that this officer took of the vehicle. Um, and what's interesting about it is that the vehicle actually commits three very obvious offences. One is that it's parked on the incorrect side of the road the second that it's parked on the footpath, and the third that it actually doesn't obey the law in relation to the window being open. So the officer didn't give them three tickets. The officer simply gave this car a ticket for the matter that he was actually doing his job for, which was to ensure, was to try and drop the number of um, unlawful entries into cars. So, as I said, this will ultimately be a matter for the courts to decide, I would imagine, if this person wishes to plead not guilty. and. Um, and as I said, I've already seen the, footy, the, the actual photographs and um, those will no doubt come out as evidence in the court case and that's why I'm not showing them to you right now because this shouldn't be a matter that's decided in the media. This is a matter that should be decided appropriately through the court process. But in short, the, enforcing the law is about preventing theft, is that right? What I'm saying is the officer acted quite appropriately and within the law. Um, and I would hope that the public would recognise that the officer did use his discretion. Um, in fact, as I said, there were three possible offences that he could have uh, booked that vehicle for. Uh, he chose to uh, issue one infringement notice for the window being open. I think there's a, a common sense issue here. I often leave my vehicle windows open when it's a hot day um, because my vehicle often sits in the sun uh, when I'm away from this building. Um, I'll leave my window open, uh, maybe one or two centimetres to let the air flow into the car, like many Queenslanders, and I mean, people, we live in a hot climate, there's no doubt about it. But the law was put in place for a simple reason. It was to stop people breaking into cars, stealing things, or to actually from stealing the car. And that's exactly what our officer was doing uh, within the law and with discretion. Uh, he was simply doing his job. Do you think that some people in the public, though, might think that it's a bit funny that you're going to punish the person who has the car as opposed to spending more time getting the thieves? Um, 
there is, there is that preventative side and that the law was put in place to help people understand that they need to assist themselves and us so that to prevent these types of offences. And, that's, and it was, the law was made, as I remember or recollect, uh, to allow that common sense approach to leaving vehicle windows open slightly so that they, the, the vehicle could breathe and so that air could go through the vehicle. Um, and that's why um, the five centimetre rule was put in, in place. So this goes back to that perception thing that I was talking about. That the commentary on social media is that people yeah. are concerned that police are out to find you for just minding your own business as opposed to going out and catching the car thief or the person who's on their mobile phone while driving who might cause an accident. Yeah, but it. I think that this is a good law. I actually think it's a very sensible law. And I think that most members of the public in Queensland, when they understand the facts of this matter, that this wasn't just simply someone who had their window open a couple of centimetres to let it breathe, like the law allows for. This was more than that. And the public need to take responsibility. If, if someone had come and stolen that car, who was going to get called next? We would have, at cost to the Queensland public. Our officer was being uh, proactive and preventative in the nature of enforcement. Referring to, sir. I'm sorry. What footage are you referring to? Uh, what I've said is the officer actually took photographs of the of the scene as he drove up to the vehicle. Uh, he's taken um, a number of photos, and as I said, I'm not going to display them because, quite rightly, if this matter goes to court, they will become evidence in a court of law, and I don't want to be seen to be prejudging this case. This is a case that if this person claims their right to take the matter to court, then all the facts will be brought out in the court and it will be determined there. But what I am saying, I'm backing the officer's judgment 100%. All this officer was doing was their job and doing it quite appropriately. Now, is the law was in place in other states? Or I'm is, sorry? It just, is the law in place in other states or just Queensland? Uh, I have no idea about... Um, it's, it's, our, it's under our tow run, so our traffic laws here in Queensland. Do you think the police generally are sympathetic to, you know, it's extremely hot weather at the moment, especially people who have young children getting into very hot vehicles. Um, you David, know. you're absolutely right. And as I said, I often leave my windows open, but I leave them open within the law, as I hope that um, any of you who do the same thing would do. And that's all I'm saying. Is there any concern that because of these quotas that we're going to, well, the, sorry, the new report system, that, that we're going to see more fines like this and, and less leniency from police to say, look, you know, do you know that you're doing the wrong thing there? That's... Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, we've had performance management systems for a very long time. Um, I'm just saying that when you take our performance management system, we're looking at continually improving on that. And that's what we've done with the balance scored card. What this officer was doing was exactly what we ask our police to do. They were looking at a local problem, and the local problem was an increase in thefts from motor vehicles and unlawful uses in the area. He was enforcing the laws appropriately, and he used his discretion. As I said, um, the photos clearly depict what I believe are three different offences that he could have actually left infringement notice for. He didn't, he chose not to do that. He left it for one, for the, the one that would have caused the most problem, and that is the window being open. Um, you know, in, it's the, very similar to the lock it and lose it campaign that we've run in car parks for many, many years. Um, this officer was operating both, I think, quite strategically and proactively uh, and within the law. Enough. Thanks, guys. Lovely to 